In the journey of life, the teachings of Buddhism serve as a guiding light, illuminating the path to inner peace and profound understanding. At the heart of these teachings lies a profound simplicity that encourages us to shed the superfluous layers that cloud our true essence. 11 things you should quietly eliminate from your life isn't just advice. It's a transformative practice that aligns with the core principles of Buddhism, mindfulness, detachment, and the pursuit of enlightenment. Buddhism, a spiritual tradition that focuses on personal spiritual development and the attainment of a deep insight into the true nature of life, offers invaluable lessons on the art of living. These lessons aren't about renouncing the world, but rather about engaging with it more wisely and compassionately. Our daily lives can often become cluttered with habits, thoughts and relationships that do not serve our highest good or align with our true path. The Buddha taught that to find peace, one must understand the nature of suffering and move beyond it by eliminating the sources of mental and emotional clutter. The first step in this purifying journey is to recognize the weight of material attachment. In a world that constantly urges us to acquire more, Buddhism teaches us the liberating practice of detachment. Letting go of excessive material possessions can free our minds and reduce the suffering tied to loss and impermanence. This teaching isn't about living with nothing, but about prioritizing what truly adds value to our lives, bringing us joy and fulfillment without attachment. Another critical aspect we must address is the realm of negative self-talk. Our inner critic can be relentless, often rooted in deep-seated fears and unexamined beliefs. Buddhism introduces us to the practice of loving-kindness, metta, and mindfulness, which empower us to replace self-criticism with compassion and understanding. By observing our thoughts without attachment, we learn to dissolve negative patterns and cultivate a gentler, more loving relationship with ourselves. Moreover, Buddhism emphasizes the importance of living in the present moment, a direct antidote to excessive worrying. By focusing on the here and now, we can engage more fully with our lives appreciating the richness of each moment. Mindfulness meditation is a key practice in this regard, helping us to acknowledge and release anxieties about the past and future, thereby freeing us to act with clarity and purpose. Anger and resentment also cloud our judgment and hinder our ability to love unconditionally. Through the teachings of Buddha, we learn that forgiveness is not just an altruistic act towards others, but a crucial step towards our own freedom. Releasing anger transforms our experiences and relationships, fostering a peaceful mind and compassionate heart. As we journey through each of these teachings, the goal is not merely to eliminate negative aspects, but to nurture the positive attributes that naturally arise in their absence. The path of Buddhism encourages us not just to empty, but to fill our lives with meaningful experiences, relationships, and a sense of purpose aligned with our true selves. This series will explore these transformative steps in depth, offering practical advice and reflections to help you let go of what no longer serves you, making room for peace, joy, and ultimate enlightenment. Embark on this journey with an open heart and a willing spirit and discover the boundless possibilities that await when you clear the path to your truest self. Teaching Number 1. The Liberation of Letting Go of Material Attachments In the serene teachings of Buddhism, the path to enlightenment is often paved with the practice of letting go. As we gather here today, let us explore the profound wisdom of detaching from material possessions, a principle that is foundational yet transformative, leading us toward true liberation and peace. The Buddha, in his infinite wisdom, taught us that attachment is the root of all suffering. 
This attachment does not merely refer to our possessions, but to our relationships, our desires, and our false beliefs about what we need to be happy. However, today we focus specifically on material attachments, the tangible symbols of our desires and fears. Understanding Attachment To understand why we must detach from material possessions, we first need to understand what attachment is. In Buddhism, attachment is viewed as a misunderstanding of the nature of things. We cling to material goods under the mistaken belief that they are integral to our happiness and identity. However, this attachment binds us to a cycle of desire and dissatisfaction. Each possession we acquire only fuels the desire for more, creating an endless loop that distracts us from our true spiritual path. The Impermanence of Material Goods Buddhist teachings emphasize the impermanence of all things. Everything we can touch, see or possess will eventually fade or change. By recognizing this impermanence, we can reduce the significance we place on material goods. Imagine holding a beautifully crafted vase. While we can appreciate its beauty, we must also acknowledge that one day it might break. This realization helps us enjoy the vase without developing an attachment that could lead to suffering. Practical Steps to Reduce Dependency 1. Mindfulness and Reflection Begin by observing your possessions and ask yourself, Why do I hold on to this? Reflect on whether it serves a practical purpose or if you are ascribing emotional value that leads to attachment. Practice mindfulness by focusing on the present moment when using any item, fully experiencing its use without projecting additional significance onto it. 2. Simplify your environment. Declutter your living space by removing items that you do not use or that no longer serve a meaningful purpose in your life. This act is not just physical cleaning, but a symbolic release of clinging Simplifying isn't about deprivation, it's about making room for things that truly matter, relationships, experiences, and self-growth. 3. Cultivate Contentment Contentment, Santosha, is a key practice in Buddhism. It involves appreciating what you have at the moment without longing for more. Practice gratitude daily by acknowledging and valuing what you have rather than focusing on what is missing. 4. Give generously. Generosity or dana is a significant Buddhist practice that counteracts the poison of greed. By giving to others, not only do you detach from possessions, but you also cultivate a spirit of kindness and connection with others. The joy of non-attachment. As we practice detachment, we might fear that letting go of possessions will lead to joylessness. However, the opposite is true. Non-attachment brings a deeper joy that comes from within, not from external sources. It aligns us with the Buddhist path of understanding the true nature of reality, free from the illusions that material goods create. This joy manifests in the freedom from fear, fear of loss, fear of theft, fear of status. When our happiness is no longer tied to objects, we find a profound peace and security that no amount of possessions could provide. Living with Purpose Detachment from material goods opens us to a life of purpose. Freed from the endless pursuit of accumulation, our actions can align more closely with our spiritual goals. We live more intentionally focusing on personal development, compassionate acts, and mindful living. Conclusion A Call to Mindful Living As we conclude this teaching, remember that the practice of letting go is a journey. It begins with a single step, perhaps with letting go of one unnecessary possession today. As you continue on this path, 
Reflect on the peace and freedom each step brings into your life. Embrace this teaching not just as a concept, but as a daily practice. Engage with the world around you with a spirit of detachment, and you will walk the noble path toward enlightenment, accompanied by a profound sense of peace and fulfillment. In doing so, we not only follow in the footsteps of the Buddha, but also forge a path that leads us back to our truest, most enlightened selves. Teaching number. Silencing the inner critic, the path to self-compassion. In the quiet moments of reflection, it is often our own voice that we hear the loudest, the voice of the inner critic. Today, we delve into the second teaching of our series, exploring the transformational practice of silencing negative self-talk, a concept deeply rooted in Buddhist philosophy. This practice not only encourages a kinder dialogue within, but also aligns us with the Buddhist virtues of loving-kindness and compassion towards oneself. The Nature of Negative Self-Talk Negative self-talk is the inner dialogue that critiques, doubts, and often demeans our own worth. It is a voice that has been conditioned by past experiences, societal expectations, and personal fears. In Buddhism, this harsh internal critic is recognized as a manifestation of Mara, the deceiver, who distracts and pulls us away from our path to enlightenment. Recognizing this voice as an impediment is the first step towards transforming it. Understanding Non-Self, Anatta One of the core concepts of Buddhism is Anatta, or Non-Self. This teaching asserts that there is no unchanging, permanent self. The implications of this for negative self-talk are profound. If there is no fixed self, then the critical, unkind self-images we hold onto are not our true nature, but passing conditions. This perspective allows us to detach from negative self-talk and observe these thoughts without identifying with them. Practical Steps to Foster Self-Compassion 1. Mindfulness Meditation Begin with mindfulness meditation to become aware of the presence of negative self-talk without judgment. Sit quietly, breathe, and observe your thoughts. As you notice critical thoughts, acknowledge them and let them go with each outbreath, imagining them dissipating into the air. 2. Loving-kindness meditation metta. Cultivate loving-kindness towards yourself by practicing metta meditation. Recite phrases such as, may I be happy, may I be well, may I be safe, may I be peaceful and at ease. Feel the warmth of these wishes embracing your heart, counteracting the coldness of self-criticism. 3. Affirmations and Positive Replacements Replace critical thoughts with affirmations that acknowledge your inherent worth and potential. Use phrases like, I am doing my best, or I am worthy of kindness and respect. These affirmations are not about convincing yourself of something untrue, but reminding yourself of your intrinsic value. Compassionate Response When you catch yourself engaging in negative self-talk, respond as you would to a dear friend, gently, kindly, with understanding. Ask yourself, would I speak to someone I love in this way? If not, why would you speak to yourself in that manner? The Benefits of Silencing the Inner Critic By silencing our inner critic and fostering a more compassionate self-dialogue, we align closer with our true nature, which is compassionate and wise. This alignment brings numerous benefits. Reduced Anxiety and depression. As we become kinder to ourselves, symptoms of anxiety and depression can diminish. Self-compassion provides a supportive inner landscape for dealing with life's challenges. Enhanced self-worth. With each act of kindness towards ourselves, our sense of self-worth strengthens, 
making us more resilient against criticism and setbacks. Deeper spiritual connection. Self-compassion allows us to forgive ourselves for our faults and imperfections, acknowledging them as part of the human condition. This fosters a deeper spiritual connection and understanding. Conclusion. Embracing compassion in all facets of life. As we continue to practice silencing the inner critic, let us not forget that this is a gradual process, a journey of many steps. Each act of kindness towards ourselves is a step towards a more compassionate world. The silence you create from quelling your inner critic can then be filled with the sound of gentle compassion resonating through all aspects of your life. Embrace this practice with patience and perseverance and watch as the gardens of your mind bloom with the flowers of peace and self-acceptance. This in itself is a profound step toward enlightenment and a testament to the transformative power of Buddhist teachings. Teaching number three, the art of living in the present, overcoming excessive worrying. In our exploration of the teachings that guide us toward a more enlightened path, we now turn our attention to the practice of living fully in the present moment. This practice, a cornerstone of Buddhist philosophy, offers a profound remedy for the chronic worrying that can cloud our minds and detract from the quality of our lives. Let us delve into how Buddhism teaches us to transcend excessive worrying and embrace the present. Understanding the nature of worry. Worry is an emotional and mental habit where the mind fixates on potential problems and uncertainties of the future. While some level of concern can be helpful in planning and preparation, excessive worrying is akin to a hamster wheel, constant and exhausting, yet leading nowhere. In Buddhism, worry is seen as a form of unnecessary suffering that arises from our attachments to desired outcomes and our fears of negative possibilities. The Principle of Impermanence, Anicca. Buddhism teaches the concept of Anicca or impermanence, which is the understanding that all conditions, whether good or bad, are transient. This knowledge can be incredibly liberating when applied to our worries. Realizing that this too shall pass helps to alleviate the heaviness of our anxieties, reminding us that our current fears and troubles are not permanent fixtures in our lives. Practical Steps to Cultivate Presence 1. Mindfulness Practice Engage in regular mindfulness meditation. Sit quietly and focus on your breath. When your mind wanders to worries, gently bring it back to the present moment. This practice trains your mind to stay anchored in the now, reducing the tendency to drift into anxiety-inducing future scenarios. 2. Engage fully with your senses. Take moments throughout your day to engage deeply with your senses. For example, when eating, focus on the taste, texture and aroma of your food. When walking, notice the feel of the ground under your feet and the air on your skin. These practices ground you in the present and away from hypothetical futures. 3. Journaling Write down your worries and then note how many of them actually come to pass. This exercise can help you see the futility of most worries and reduce the habit of worrying over time. Fourth, gratitude. At the end of each day, write or mentally note three things you were grateful for. Gratitude shifts your focus from what might go wrong to what is already right in your life, fostering positive emotions and reducing worry. The joy of present moment living. Living in the present opens up a world of joy and appreciation that worrying often obscures. When we are fully present, life becomes richer and more fulfilling. We are able to connect more deeply with others, engage more fully in our activities, and appreciate the beauty of the ordinary moments that make up our lives. Moreover, 
present moment living allows us to respond to life's challenges with clarity and wisdom, rather than reacting out of fear or habit. It fosters a resilience that is deeply rooted in the realistic acceptance of life's fluctuating nature. Conclusion Embracing the Now As we conclude this teaching, remember that each moment you bring yourself back to the present, you are stepping away from unnecessary worries and moving closer to peace. The practice of living in the present is not about never planning for the future or ignoring practical concerns. Rather, it is about balancing those plans with a deep and abiding appreciation for the now, understanding that life in all its uncertainty is still to be lived and cherished in the moment. Let this knowledge inspire you to let go of the future's uncertainties and embrace the present with open arms, experiencing life's tapestry with a heart full of courage and eyes wide open to the wonders of the here and now. Teaching number, dissolving anger and resentment, pathways to forgiveness. As we continue our exploration of the teachings that can significantly enhance our spiritual journey, we now address the pervasive emotions of anger and resentment. These intense emotions, while natural, can become barriers to our happiness and spiritual growth if left unchecked. Let us explore how Buddhist principles guide us in transforming these fiery emotions into opportunities for profound personal transformation and peace. The Roots of Anger and Resentment In Buddhist thought, anger and resentment are often seen as manifestations of attachment and ego, attachment to how we believe things should be, and the ego's demand to be right or recognized. These emotions arise from a perceived injury or injustice, and the lingering hold they have on our mind can poison our inner peace and cloud our judgment. The Principle of Compassion, Karuna At the heart of Buddhism is the practice of compassion, or Karuna. This principle teaches us to look beyond our personal grievances and see the larger picture of human suffering. When we cultivate compassion, not just for others but also for ourselves, we begin to see the pain that underlies anger and are thus more able to forgive and let go. Practical Steps to Overcome Anger and Resentment 1. Mindful Acknowledgement Recognize when you're feeling angry or resentful. Instead of suppressing these feelings, acknowledge them mindfully. Understand that these emotions are part of your human experience, but do not define your entirety. 2. Deep Breathing and Reflection Whenever anger or resentment flare up, pause and take deep breaths. This simple act can help to dissipate the immediate intensity of your emotions, providing a space for more rational and compassionate reflection. 3. Understanding the other's perspective. Try to understand the situation from the other person's perspective. Often, anger arises from a misunderstanding or a difference in perspective. Reflecting on this can decrease feelings of personal attack and increase empathy. Fourth, meditation on loving-kindness, metta. Engage regularly in metta meditation, where you send wishes of happiness, safety and well-being first to yourself and then to others, including those who have angered you. This practice can profoundly shift your emotional responses. Five, Seek constructive solutions. Instead of stewing in anger, look for constructive solutions to the issue at hand. Can something be learned or improved? How can you contribute to a positive change? Acting constructively can turn negative energy into an opportunity for growth. The transformative power of forgiveness. Forgiveness is not about condoning wrong behavior or denying your feelings. It is about releasing the burden of anger and resentment that can weigh down your spirit. Forgiving others, and importantly yourself, can free up energy that was once consumed by negative emotions, 
allowing more room for peace and joy. Forgiveness also aligns with the Buddhist understanding of impermanence. Just as our feelings and experiences are transient, so too can our grievances be let go, recognizing that clinging to them only prolongs our suffering. Conclusion Embracing Peace Through Letting Go As we conclude this teaching, reflect on how letting go of anger and resentment can open the doors to deeper personal peace and understanding. By practicing forgiveness, we not only liberate ourselves from the chains of past hurts, but also cultivate a heart more capable of love and compassion. Embrace these practices not as occasional remedies, but as consistent habits that define a life lived in harmony with Buddhist teachings. As you do so, you will find that the peace you cultivate within yourself radiates outward, influencing all aspects of your life and interactions. This journey, though challenging, is profoundly rewarding and essential for anyone seeking a true sense of serenity and spiritual fulfillment. Teaching number five, breaking free from unhealthy relationships, a path to self-liberation. Navigating the complexities of human relationships is an integral aspect of our lives. However, not all relationships nurture our growth. Some can deeply hinder it. In this teaching, we explore how Buddhist principles can guide us in recognizing and gently releasing ourselves from unhealthy relationships, fostering a healthier, more balanced life. Recognizing unhealthy relationships. An unhealthy relationship is characterized by consistent negativity, imbalance, or the suppression of one's true self. These relationships may involve excessive dependency, lack of respect, manipulation, or a general lack of kindness and support. Recognizing these traits is the first step towards transformation, aligning with the Buddhist practice of right understanding in the Noble Eightfold Path. The Principle of Interdependence Buddhism teaches us about interdependence, how all beings are connected and how our actions affect not just ourselves but those around us. Understanding this connection, we see that nurturing toxic relationships can harm not only our spiritual journey but also the collective well-being. Embracing healthy interdependence involves fostering relationships that are mutually supportive and respectful of each individual's path to growth. Practical Steps to Release Unhealthy Ties 1. Mindful Reflection Spend time reflecting on your relationships. Identify how each relationship makes you feel and whether it supports your highest well-being. This mindful reflection can be aided by journaling or meditative practices that allow you to observe your feelings without judgment. 2. Communication Open, honest communication is key. Express your feelings and concerns respectfully to the other person. Sometimes awareness can prompt change. However, be prepared that not all relationships will transform positively. 3. Setting boundaries Set clear, firm boundaries to protect your emotional and mental health. Boundaries are not punishments, but affirmations of your self-respect and dignity. Clearly articulate what is acceptable and what is not, and stick to these guidelines. Seeking support. Reach out for support from friends, family or professionals. Counseling can provide guidance and a safe space to explore your feelings and options, Spiritual community or Sangha can also offer wisdom and support. 5. Letting go If a relationship continues to be harmful despite your efforts, consider letting go. This does not mean you wish ill on the other person. Rather, you are prioritizing your well-being and spiritual peace. Letting go can be a practice of compassion towards yourself and the other, freeing both from a cycle of suffering. The Benefits of Healthy Relationships Embracing healthy relationships enhances our lives profoundly. 
These relationships promote mutual growth, understanding and joy. They support our spiritual practices and help us to embody the qualities of compassion, kindness and empathy more fully in our daily lives. Conclusion Cultivating Compassion and Wisdom As we conclude this teaching, reflect on the importance of compassion and wisdom in nurturing healthy relationships. Remember that every interaction is an opportunity to practice these virtues. By consciously choosing who we share our journey with, we not only enhance our own path to enlightenment, but also contribute to a more compassionate world. Breaking free from unhealthy relationships is not an act of rejection, but a commitment to authenticity and mutual well-being. It is a courageous step towards honoring and respecting both ourselves and others, fostering a life filled with genuine connection and spiritual fulfillment. Teaching number six, embracing the flow, letting go of the need for control. In the quest for inner peace and spiritual growth, one of the significant obstacles we often encounter is our deep-seated desire to control outcomes in our lives. This teaching delves into the Buddhist perspective on relinquishing this need for control, thereby embracing the natural flow of life, which leads to greater serenity and understanding. The Illusion of Control the desire to control is rooted in the illusion that we can shape every aspect of our lives according to our wishes. While it's true that we have influence over our decisions and actions, many outcomes remain beyond our direct control. This can lead to frustration and dissatisfaction when things do not go as planned. Buddhism teaches us about the impermanence and unpredictability of life, encouraging us to accept and adapt rather than cling and control. The principle of anika, impermanence. Anika, or impermanence, is a fundamental concept in Buddhism that all things, experiences and phenomena are transient. By understanding and accepting impermanence, we learn to appreciate the present without excessively worrying about the future. This acceptance is crucial in reducing the compulsive need to control every detail of our lives. Practical Steps to Reduce the Need for Control 1. Mindfulness Meditation Engage in mindfulness meditation regularly to cultivate awareness and acceptance of the present moment. This practice helps you recognize the transient nature of your thoughts and feelings, reducing the urge to control them. 2. Reflect on past experiences. Reflect on instances where things didn't go as planned, but led to unexpected positive outcomes. Such reflections can reinforce the understanding that not all control is beneficial and that sometimes the best outcomes arise from unforeseen changes. 3. Cultivate flexibility. Practice being flexible in your daily life. Start with small things, like changing your routine or trying new activities. Flexibility in small matters can help build resilience and reduce anxiety about larger uncertainties. Fourth, let go of perfectionism. Challenge perfectionistic tendencies by setting realistic expectations and accepting that mistakes are part of learning and growth. This mindset shift can significantly reduce the stress associated with the need for control. 5. Trust in the process. Develop trust in the natural flow of life. Recognize that some situations may be beyond your control and that letting go can often lead to better outcomes than tight control. The joy of letting go. Letting go of the need for control opens up a space for peace and contentment in our lives. It allows us to live more fully in the present, enjoying experiences as they come without the constant stress of trying to force them into a predetermined mold. Moreover, it enhances our relationships as we learn to interact with others with openness and acceptance 
rather than manipulation and dominance. Conclusion, a path to true freedom. As we embrace the practice of letting go, we find that our need for control diminishes naturally. We begin to experience true freedom, not the freedom to control everything, but the freedom from the need to do so. This shift is profoundly liberating, aligning us more closely with the core teachings of Buddhism and leading us toward a deeper, more meaningful spiritual path. Embrace this teaching not just as a philosophical concept, but as a practical approach to everyday living. By doing so, you will discover that the beauty of life often lies in its unpredictability and that true peace comes not from controlling the flow, but from riding it with awareness, grace and acceptance. Teaching number seven, the detriments of comparison, cultivating contentment. In our seventh teaching, we delve into the detrimental habit of constantly comparing ourselves to others, a practice that can significantly hinder our spiritual and personal growth. Buddhism offers profound insights into why we should avoid comparisons and how to cultivate a sense of contentment and self-appreciation. The Trap of Constant Comparison Comparison is a natural human tendency, but when it becomes a habitual way of evaluating our worth, it leads to suffering. Whether comparing our possessions, achievements, or even our spiritual progress, this habit can foster feelings of inadequacy, jealousy, and dissatisfaction. Buddhism teaches that true happiness and peace come from within, not from external circumstances or others' perceptions. Understanding Anatta, Non-Self The concept of Anatta, or Non-Self, in Buddhism challenges the very basis of comparison by questioning the existence of a permanent, unchanging self. If there is no fixed self, the comparisons we make are not only unhelpful, but also unreal. They are based on the false view of self as something that can be measured against others, which is a misunderstanding of our true nature. Practical Steps to Overcome Comparison 1. Mindfulness Practice Engage in regular mindfulness practices to become more aware of when you are making comparisons. Mindfulness helps you notice these thoughts without judgment and gently guide your focus back to your own path and progress. 2. Cultivate Gratitude Make it a daily habit to reflect on things you are grateful for in your life. Gratitude shifts your focus from what you perceive you lack to appreciating what you already have, reducing the need to compare. 3. Recognize unique paths. Acknowledge that each person is on a unique journey with different lessons and timings. Remind yourself that comparison is not only fruitless, but also irrelevant because no two paths are the same. Celebrate your achievements. Instead of measuring your success against others, set personal goals and celebrate your own achievements, no matter how small. This builds self-esteem and reduces the urge to look outward for validation. 5. Metta Meditation Practice Metta, Loving Kindness. Meditation to foster a sense of goodwill towards yourself and others. This helps dissolve feelings of jealousy and competition, replacing them with compassion and empathy. The Benefits of Letting Go of Comparison Letting go of comparison allows you to truly connect with others in a meaningful way, free from the barriers of judgment and envy. It fosters a deeper sense of community and shared humanity as you recognize that everyone faces challenges and has strengths and weaknesses. Moreover, freeing yourself from the cycle of comparison enhances your mental and emotional well-being. It allows you to focus on your personal growth and find satisfaction in your own accomplishments, leading to a more joyful and contented life. Conclusion 
embracing individuality and contentment. As we conclude this teaching, embrace the freedom that comes from letting go of comparisons. Celebrate your unique journey and cultivate contentment with who you are and where you are in life. This doesn't mean complacency, but a profound acceptance that brings peace and allows for genuine, unimpeded growth. Implementing these practices not only aligns you with the core tenets of Buddhism, but also transforms your everyday experiences, leading to a richer, more fulfilling life. Let this be a call to action to view yourself and others through a lens of compassion and understanding, stepping away from comparison towards a path of true contentment. Teaching number eight, the virtue of saying no, embracing moderation and balance. In our eighth lesson from Buddhist teachings, we explore the empowering practice of saying no, a vital aspect of embracing moderation and balance in life. This principle helps us cultivate a healthy relationship with our commitments and responsibilities, aligning us with the middle way, a core tenet of Buddhism that advocates for a balanced path between extremes. The importance of saying no. In a world that often values busyness as a badge of honor, the ability to say no is crucial. Overcommitment can lead to stress, burnout, and a life that lacks depth and meaning. Saying no is not about shirking responsibility, but about making informed choices that align with our true priorities and spiritual well-being. The Middle Way The Buddha taught the Middle Way as the path of moderation, avoiding the extremes of asceticism and indulgence. In modern terms, this can be applied to our daily choices about how we spend our time and energy. Saying no to excessive demands allows us to say yes to activities and commitments that are truly enriching and aligned with our spiritual goals. Practical Steps to Practicing Moderation 1. Mindful Decision Making When presented with a new commitment, take a moment to reflect mindfully on whether it aligns with your values and current priorities. Ask yourself if this commitment serves your highest well-being or if it is simply another task on an already full plate. 2. Set clear priorities. Clearly define what is most important in your life, whether it be family, health, spiritual practice or career. This clarity will make it easier to decide what deserves your time and what does not. 3. Communicate boundaries. Once you decide to say no, Communicate your decision clearly and respectfully. Explain your reasons if necessary, but remain firm in your boundaries. Remember, saying no to someone else often means saying yes to your own well-being. Fourth, cultivate self-compassion. Saying no can sometimes lead to feelings of guilt or worry about disappointing others. Cultivate self-compassion by reminding yourself that your needs are important and that caring for yourself allows you to care better for others. 5. Embrace quality over quantity. Focus on doing fewer things well rather than many things inadequately. Embrace the quality of your actions and interactions, which often increases when not spread too thin. The Benefits of Embracing Moderation By saying no and embracing moderation, you create space in your life for what truly matters. This space allows for deeper engagement with your spiritual practices, more meaningful interactions with others, and a greater sense of presence in every moment. Additionally, this practice can lead to increased resilience as you are less likely to experience burnout and more likely to maintain a steady, fulfilling path in both your personal and spiritual life. Conclusion A Path to Inner Peace and Fulfillment As we conclude this teaching, consider the transformative power of saying no as a form of spiritual and personal discipline. 
It is an essential practice for anyone seeking to live a balanced, meaningful life in accordance with Buddhist principles. Embracing moderation and balance not only enhances our own lives, but also sets a profound example for others in how to live intentionally and with purpose. Let this teaching serve as an invitation to reflect on your current commitments and consider where you might benefit from saying no, thus opening the door to a more balanced, peaceful and fulfilling life. Teaching number nine, releasing the weight of guilt and regret, a path to inner freedom. In our ninth exploration of Buddhist teachings, we delve into the liberating practice of releasing guilt and regret. These emotions, while natural, can become heavy burdens if we cling to them, hindering our progress on the path to enlightenment. Let us explore how Buddhism teaches us to transform these feelings into lessons and stepping stones towards a deeper understanding and acceptance. Understanding Guilt and Regret Guilt and regret are emotions that arise from actions or decisions that we perceive as mistakes or missed opportunities. These feelings can serve as important signals, prompting us to reflect and make amends. However, when these emotions persist unchecked, they can lead to a cycle of self-blame and sadness, trapping us in the past and obscuring the potential for present growth. The Principle of Karma Buddhism teaches the principle of karma, which explains that actions have consequences. This concept encourages responsibility, but also implies the possibility of change. Our future is not determined solely by our past actions, but also by how we respond to their outcomes. Understanding this can help us release guilt and regret by focusing on positive actions that create better outcomes moving forward. Practical Steps to Overcome Guilt and Regret 1. Mindful Acknowledgement Recognize and acknowledge your feelings of guilt or regret without judgment. See them as part of your human experience and a natural response to perceived mistakes. 2. Learn from mistakes. Reflect on the situations that cause you guilt or regret and identify any lessons or insights. Use these as opportunities for growth rather than sources of punishment. 3. Apologize and make amends. If your actions have hurt others, take steps to apologize and make amends where possible. This can relieve feelings of guilt and mend relationships, which is crucial for both personal and spiritual development. Fourth, forgiveness, meditation. Practice forgiveness. Meditation, extending forgiveness to yourself and others involved. Repeating phrases like, may I be forgiven, may I forgive myself, may I learn from my past, can soothe the pain of guilt and open the heart to compassion. 5. Commit to positive change. Use your insights to commit to positive changes in your behavior. This proactive approach shifts your focus from past mistakes to future opportunities, aligning with the Buddhist belief in continuous transformation. The benefits of releasing guilt and regret. Letting go of guilt and regret frees us from the chains of the past, allowing us to fully engage with the present. It also opens up a space for joy and gratitude, elements that enrich our lives and deepen our spiritual practices. Additionally, this release fosters a sense of inner peace and self-acceptance, crucial components for any spiritual path. Conclusion Embracing a Future of Possibilities As we conclude this teaching, embrace the freedom that comes from releasing guilt and regret. Recognize that each moment presents a new opportunity to live according to your values and spiritual beliefs. By learning from the past, but not dwelling in it, you can move forward with a lighter heart and a clearer mind, ready to engage with the world in more meaningful and compassionate ways.
Let this lesson inspire you to forgive yourself and others, to learn from every experience, and to walk your path with confidence and grace. The practice of releasing guilt and regret is not only about overcoming past burdens, but also about unlocking the full potential of your future. Teaching number 10, overcoming the fear of change, embracing new beginnings. In our 10th lesson from Buddhist teachings, we explore how to overcome the fear of change, a common human experience that can limit our potential for growth and happiness. Buddhism provides insightful guidance on embracing change, not as a source of fear, but as a natural and beneficial part of life's continuous flow. The Nature of Fear and Change Fear of change is rooted in the unknown. It is a protective response that keeps us within the bounds of what is familiar and perceived as safe. However, this resistance to change can prevent us from experiencing new opportunities and learning from life's vast array of experiences. Buddhism teaches that change is the very essence of nature, evident in the concept of anika, or impermanence, which reminds us that everything is in constant flux. Accepting impermanence, anika. Accepting impermanence is a fundamental Buddhist practice that helps dissolve the fear of change by acknowledging that all conditions, whether pleasant or unpleasant, are temporary we can reduce our anxiety about future uncertainties and learn to live more fully in the present. Practical Steps to Embrace Change 1. Mindfulness Meditation Practice mindfulness meditation to ground yourself in the present moment. This practice helps you become more aware of your thoughts and feelings about change, allowing you to observe them without judgment or resistance. 2. Reflect on past changes. Reflect on how previous changes in your life have led to growth or positive outcomes. This can help shift your perspective on future changes from fear to curiosity and optimism. 3. Cultivate flexibility. Work on becoming more adaptable by trying new things in small, manageable ways. Flexibility in daily life builds resilience and confidence, making larger changes less daunting. Fourth, develop a support network. Cultivate relationships with friends, family, or a spiritual community who can provide support and encouragement during times of change. Knowing you have support can significantly lessen the fear associated with new beginnings. Five, Visualize positive outcomes. Use visualization techniques to imagine yourself successfully navigating change. Positive visualization can help reinforce a sense of capability and reduce fear. The benefits of embracing change. Embracing change can lead to a multitude of benefits. It opens us up to new experiences and opportunities fosters personal growth and learning, and can even lead to unexpected joy and fulfillment. Furthermore, accepting change reduces stress and anxiety, enhances flexibility and adaptability, and promotes a more profound sense of peace with life's inherent uncertainties. Conclusion Moving Forward with Courage As we conclude this teaching, Remember that overcoming the fear of change is a journey that involves continuous practice and mindfulness. Embrace each new change as an opportunity to learn and grow. Use the principles of Buddhism to support your journey, remembering that each step forward, no matter how uncertain, is a step toward a richer, more fulfilling life. Let this understanding inspire you to face the future with openness and courage embracing the natural flow of life with an accepting heart and a resilient spirit. In doing so, you not only enrich your own life, but also contribute to the collective human experience with wisdom and compassion. Teaching number 11, the path to freedom, dissolving fear of change and embracing life's uncertainties. In our final teaching of this series, 
we revisit and deepen our understanding of handling life's inherent uncertainties, focusing on dissolving the fear of change. This practice is essential for cultivating a peaceful mind and a resilient spirit, embodying the Buddhist teachings that guide us towards liberation from suffering. Understanding the fear of change. The fear of change is deeply rooted in our desire for security and predictability. However, clinging to stability in an ever-changing world creates tension and anxiety as it contradicts the fundamental nature of reality, which is constant change. Buddhism teaches us that embracing the impermanence of life is key to experiencing true freedom and happiness. The Principle of Impermanence Anika. Anika, or impermanence, is not just a concept to be intellectually understood, but a reality to be embraced daily. It reminds us that everything from our emotions to our life circumstances is transient and subject to change. This realization helps us to live more fully in the present, appreciating each moment without clinging to any state as permanent. Practical Steps to Embrace Impermanence 1. Daily Reflection on Change Incorporate a daily practice of reflecting on the impermanence of things around you. Whether it's noticing the changing seasons or observing the comings and goings in your own life, this practice helps normalize change as a natural part of existence. 2. Mindfulness of thoughts and emotions. Practice mindfulness to observe your thoughts and emotions without attachment. Recognize that just like external circumstances, your internal landscape is also in a constant state of flux. This awareness can reduce the fear associated with change. 3. Embracing new experiences. Actively seek out new experiences to reinforce your adaptability and resilience. Each new experience that you navigate successfully builds confidence in your ability to handle change. Fourth, letting go rituals. Engage in regular rituals of letting go, such as meditation focused on releasing attachments or physical acts like decluttering your space, symbolizing the release of old and making room for new. Five. Cultivate a supportive community. Surround yourself with a community that embraces Buddhist principles or similar philosophies of change and impermanence. Sharing your journey with others can provide encouragement and insight, making the process less daunting. The joy of living with openness. Embracing impermanence allows us to live with a greater sense of ease and openness. We become more adaptable, less fearful of new challenges, and more accepting of the ebb and flow of life. This openness is not a resignation, but an active engagement with life, free from the heavy chains of fear. Conclusion. Freedom in every moment. As we conclude our series on eliminating life's obstacles through Buddhist teachings, reflect on the freedom that comes from embracing impermanence. This practice is not about losing something, but about gaining an entire spectrum of human experience, rich with growth, learning, and peace. Embrace each day as an opportunity to practice these teachings, knowing that every moment of letting go and embracing change is a step towards deeper understanding and true liberation. Your journey through these teachings is a profound shift towards living a life filled with wisdom, compassion, and a joyous heart, ready to welcome whatever comes next with open arms. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening journey through the 11 things you should quietly eliminate from your life, Buddhism. We hope these teachings inspire you to make transformative changes that lead to peace and fulfillment. If this series has touched or inspired you, please consider sharing it with others who might benefit from these timeless wisdoms,